Right, okay, uh, my name is Mick Allen, I'm the arts director here. Uh, Glenn Wainwright, big hand for Glenn. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you everyone for tuning out on such a cold night. And you make two and a half grams of cholesterol every day. But every cell in your body has the, the ability to make cholesterol if it's required. This is a production line in the body. It's called the Mevalon 8 metabolic pathway. We don't need to go into all the chemistry details here. But if you look down there, you'll see at the end of this production line, there are a lot of important things like growth factors, uh, mitochondrial coenzyme Q10, which is a really important compound. Some people might even be taking coenzyme Q10 as a food supplement. Cholesterol is the start of all your hormones, the steroid hormones in particular. And it's also found in the body in every single cell, in every single membrane. Four fat molecules to every cholesterol molecule. And when you go to the doctor and he says, I'm going to measure your cholesterol level, he's not talking about measuring cholesterol at all. What he's interested in is the fatty particles moving around in the bloodstream. Someone said cholesterol causes heart. Then someone said, hang on, cholesterol doing a good job. But, oh, well, it's not that cholesterol, it's this kind of cholesterol. And they subdivided it right down to cholesterol LDL and even LDL-A. It's got a real job to do. These LDLs traveling around in your blood are a parcel service delivering all the nutrients and vitamins that you require to be healthy. In order to make sure they get to the right destination, they've got a label on them in the form of a protein. Cells, and they put out a receptor. The particle comes along, it recognizes it, grabs it, and pulls it in. It's a lock and key mechanism. The receptor and the label match in order to get the lipid into the cell. A lot of things that Ansel did in his life were very good, and he deserved some reputation. He made a mistake in the 1950s when he told the world that fat and cholesterol were causing heart disease. In America, they were desperate to know what the cause. Let's look at the results he published. It's a curve, it almost goes through zero. On the one axis, we've got dietary fat consumption. And on the other axis, we've got heart disease. Right down the bottom there, you've got low fat for Japan. And then at the top, you've got high fat consumption for the USA and a high rate of heart disease. This is the data that was available to Ansel at the time. It shows the the country is to match the hypothesis. If I was allowed to choose six or seven dots on that screen, I could make that line go in any direction you wanted to. <laughs> Oops, Ansel has made a mistake. Mr. McGovern said, look, you scientists can't seem to agree on anything about fat and cholesterol and heart disease. We've got to tell people something. We've got to make a plan. This is it. Hypothesis becomes dogma. If you want your research grant, this is where you have to line up with this policy. It's something called the food pyramid. And the mainstay of diet was going to be um, all the wheat and the grain products, rice and so on. And then it worked its way up to uh, a small amount of fat, if you must. We, we can look at this. This is a study uh, done in Scandinavia. And it was a post-mortem study of accidental death. And what they did was they looked at the de de degree of atherosclerosis versus the cholesterol level in the blood. They were actually repeating work done in the 1935 study in New York, uh, where a pathologist and biochemist got together, victims of violent death. You know, here's an opportunity. We can look and see whether, in fact, atherosclerosis is linked in any way with heart disease. Deaths from heart disease, energy from fat in the diet. Well, what do you conclude from looking at those two maps, the role of fat in deaths from heart disease? They're almost negatives of each other, aren't they? The countries along the bottom are European countries. Purple line follows their cholesterol level. The blue line follows death rate due to heart disease. But there is no association at all between cholesterol level and heart disease. But this is the way the pharmaceutical industry works. If we can find a factor like language and we can get a drug that cures it, we can use the test to define that person as a customer. And we can then write them a prescription for the drug. And as long as the drug works and actually reduces their ability to speak English, we can claim a cure. So all the statisticians in the room will know is statistics. They can show you a, an association that might lead to a hypothesis, but it will never prove anything.